Well, I've been an artist my whole life, um, but and I've done every kind of medium there is, I think. But when my youngest daughter was in high school, I decided to go back to school. So I went to the Art Institute in Cincinnati, and I actually got my degree in graphic arts. But the first year I was there, they taught us all different techniques and different kind of painting. So for two weeks, we had a scratch board class, and I loved it. And um, since I love doing wildlife, and you can get so detailed with it, I just hung on to it, and that's all I do now. It's really an old art, but it's just now recently becoming more popular again. Now, I have friends who are artists that do other things like pastels or whatever, but you know, they've said they've tried scratchboard and they say, I'm not doing that anymore because it's so tedious. I mean, it takes a long time to finish one piece. Birds are my favorite thing to do, and I can get every little feather. Now, a lot of scratchboard artists only use black and white, they strictly stay with black and white. But if I'm doing a bird that's really colorful, I have to paint it. Like the American kestrels that we get out here, they're such beautiful birds. I never leave those black and white. But um, yeah, probably the different varieties of birds. They're all basically the same shape, but they can look so different based on their feathers and their the colors and everything. So that's probably why I like birds so much. I've had cats for a long time. You get to learn the lay of the fur, you know which way the fur goes, and they, you, they aren't just straight hair, they have so many different angles to their fur. And I think with me um, taking a lot of pictures of her, I'm, I'm able to study that, and even when you do wild cats, I mean, wild cats are just big domestic cats, you know, their fur lays the same. My two main tools are X-Acto knives. I use a number 11 blade, which is the sharpest blade, and I also use scalpel blades, and um, you have to get those at medical supply stores. And then I use a, a little brush called a fiberglass brush. It's it's got a real it's real tiny, and it's got a hard tip on it. So, for example, if I want to do a horse's mane and make it look really soft, I'll use that fiberglass brush and brush it to show the mane. And then I then I go back with the exacto knife to add more details later. The board itself. I buy online. There's a, an art store company that, that actually sells all the supplies. And then my husband will cut them for me. But it's a masonite board on the bottom. And then on top of that, there's a really thin layer of white clay. And then on top of that is black India ink. So then when I scratch it, it gets down to the clay level. So, um, But what I usually do is I'll draw the image that I'm going to do. I'll draw it out in chalk, in a chalk line. And I don't put any details in at all. I'm basically just doing an outline. And um, I start adding the details as I scratch. And um, you can get all different kinds of shadowing and depth by how many scratches you put on the board. So if you want to make it like a gray tone, you just do, just do less scratches or smaller scratches. Um, if you want to paint it, you can do that when it's all finished. And I don't usually decide till after I finish a piece if I'm going to paint it or not. It's just brushing on the inks. I thin them way down with water, kind of like watercolors. So I brush it on like watercolors. When I get the color in there, then I go back in again with the scalpel blade or X-Acto to add highlights to the piece. And then if I've taken too much off, I re-scratch again until I get it to where I want it to be. And um, you kind of have to be careful because that, that clay is really, really thin. So you, you, you have to kind of have a light hand when you're scratching because if you scratch too hard, you'll actually scratch down to the masonite board and you can't fix that. And then each piece is sealed with um, an acrylic spray. Usually I use three coats of acrylic um, and then you don't have to put glass on it because when you put glass on these, you kind of don't see the texture. And then the other thing too about scratch board, there's two kinds of board. There's the black board, which is what I really like, but then there's also white board, which is called clay board. And it is just the opposite process of black board. You paint it first, and then you scratch it. For example, like I did a, I did, took a picture of a horse in Louisville at, at a parade or something. It was a horse show. So I, I used a sea sponge to paint the background and gave it kind of a, a textured background. Then I did the horse that I'm gonna do. I did it all in black. And then I started scratching out the details of the horse. And it ended up being a white horse 
with um, like gold on its bridle. So you can do either the whiteboard or the blackboard. And if you want a, a textured colored background, it's best to use the, the white clay board. We always drive when we go to New York and New England. And so my husband will be driving and I'm sitting in the back seat with my bag with all my scratch board tools and everything and my lap board. And I'm working on a piece because right now I have six commissions. So I'm, you know, usually working on commissions and I think, well, I'm in the car all that time, I might as well. Now sometimes, like if you're going through West Virginia, I have to stop because it's too windy. But yeah, I work in the car all the time. Usually my husband says, we're going ha to have some bumpy road here, you better stop a minute. So yeah, he's very supportive of me. He's at all my shows with me. He helps me set up and he stays there with me the whole time. So he's, he's very supportive. Well, I've figured a lot of it out on my own, but I also am a member of the International Society of Scratchboard Artists. Um, I was following an artist, her name's Kathy Sheeter. I was following her. I saw one of her scratchboards somewhere, and um, so I looked her up online. I started corresponding with her, and she said, you should join ISSA if you love scratchboards so much. So I did, and now I've been to three scratchboard exhibits. I've actually got one of my pieces there on exhibit now in Maryland. All of the masters, they're the ones that do the training at the um, workshops. So, and they're really, they're always willing to share their tips and ideas. And we share ideas on how to spray them without ruining the piece. Um, I mean, there's just all kinds of things that they teach us. So, and, it, and that's why I'm trying to do so much now because the more I do, I think the better I get. And I always try to go to these workshops now because to me, learning from the masters, that's the best way to learn. I don't know. I mean, there are several men, too, that are really good, but most of the masters are women. And I know one of them, Diana Lee, she's out in California, the one that specializes in portraits. I know she's been doing scratch board, gosh, at least 35 years. Sally Maxwell is, too. She's in Texas. She's probably been doing scratch board at least 35 years. See, I wish I'd have found out about it sooner because... I'd be better by now if I if I'd have heard about it sooner, but I'll get there. I'll, I'll be working on a piece, and maybe I'm getting ready for a show or something, so I'll put that aside, and I'll start doing different sizes, because at my shows, I try to do a lot of different price points, so I do smaller ones up to really big ones. So if I'm getting ready for a show, and I know some of my shows, I know what my best sellers are, so I'll put aside what I'm working on, and I'll start doing a lot of birds or foxes, which are two of my best sellers. And so, or I'm working on a piece and I'm thinking, eh, that's just not coming out really how I want it to. So for me, the best way to do is to put it aside, but put it where I can see it in my studio. So I look at it every time I go in there and it gives me an idea of, oh yeah, maybe if I do this, it'll make it better. Or sometimes I'll be working on a piece and I'm thinking about another piece while I'm working on this one. And I think, ooh, I think I want to start that, so I'll put it aside and, and start something else. So I think I have three going right now. And I get attached to them. You know, it's, it makes me feel good that people want them, but, it, but then at the same time, I think, oh, you know, people don't realize how much work it takes, and that's with any art. You know, people that don't do art don't understand the time it takes to do it and what you put into it. I take most of my pictures myself. I do use um, photographs from other photographers sometimes, but I always get permission. Like all of my horses, I probably have 500 pictures of horses that I've taken myself. Um, so I've gone to the, the jumping contest out at the horse park. I've spent days out there just taking pictures of horses. So, And then over behind my house, there's some big trees that are oh gosh, probably 50 feet tall at least. We get um, kestrels out there, red-headed woodpeckers, cardinals, uh, black, you know, red-winged blackbirds, everything. I've taken so many pictures out there. In the spring, when we have a lot of water, we get birds migrating, um, like blue-winged teals. They usually migrate through, and they're here about two weeks in the spring. And if I, if I walk really slow, and get behind that catalpa tree down there, I can get some pretty good pictures of them. Um, we get great blue herons, um, one called a lesser yellow legs. It's a little, it looks like a little seashore bird, 
but they come in there uh, in the spring and they migrate through so I just love being out here because I, I get birds here that I never got when I was in Georgetown probably because of the water and then the open fields the kestrels love that and then we have our, our bird feeders so we get a lot of birds at our feeders hummingbirds and finches and just all kinds of birds out there too so and I was sitting here one day and a great horned owl headed right towards the house like it was going to hit that window <laughs> and then it veered off to the side and I ran over to this window and watched it go by and ran to the front and it, it flew across to the field across the street but I was um, I was so mesmerized I didn't get my camera I, I could have gotten such a great shot of it but and so when I'm at Kentucky Crafted, I demonstrate the whole time I'm there because um, I know that when I used to do shows, I didn't, I didn't demonstrate, and I would try to explain it to people how I did it. But I think a lot of times people didn't understand until they actually saw me working on a piece. But I've gotten students at my shows. You know, a lot of people have said, well, I, I do this kind of art, but I'd like to try this. So I've, I have one-on-one -on -one students in my studio. I had some brochures made up that tell about Scratchboard in detail, how I start it, how I finish it. So I'm hoping, you know, once I give enough of those out, people will say, hey, I want to do this. And I really love teaching children about it. Uh, a lot of kids, you know, come to the shows with their parents, and they're so interested, and I love doing that. Kentucky Crafted to me is awesome. I mean... Especially last time, with all the bad weather and everything, everybody was so willing to help, and, you know, it, it was just really great. I've had a really good experience with them. And I, ha I keep a notebook of every time I have an idea, I write it down. This is what I want to, want to do next, and right now I think I have 47 things in there. And then as I do them, I check them off. And then if I think of something else, I write it down. So I'm thinking, I'll never get all these done before I die, but I'm going to try. <laughs> you know, it's, um, I just have so many ideas and so many things that I want to do. Some of my friends I work with, they've asked me, are, well, are you going to keep doing this when you retire? Absolutely. I wish I had more time now to do it because I'm just, I'm really passionate about it. <laughs>